A quilt is only a quilt once you quilt it. Which is to say the quilting stitches themselves are the ones that go through an upper fabric and a lower fabric with batting in between to tie all the layers together. If we haven't quilted our project, it's just patchwork. So in this episode of the How to Quilt video series, quilting. quilt sandwich is assembled and we are ready to take our quilt to the sewing machine, we get to decide what those quilting stitches look like. And there are, oh, there are so many resources out there for you as you are considering what those quilting stitches will look like. One of the most common conversations that I hear in person or see online amongst quilters is, what, is you, what are your quilting plans? How are you going to quilt it? You can take the direction of those stitches any way you want, and a lot of that is inspired by the design of the patchwork. Ideally, the quilting stitches should accentuate and add to the patchwork and not take away from it. So it does require a little bit of thought heading into that. For our sampler quilt, we can think about quilting in different regions of the quilt in order to make those decisions easier. So for example, you could quilt each of the 12 blocks differently inside the sashing, as if that block exists inside a frame, and then quilt the sashing differently still. You could also do what a lot of people do with very complicated patchwork and do what's called straight line quilting, which means that you draw a line with chalk or vanishing ink on the quilt top itself, stitch on that line, and then every other line of stitches is parallel to that line of stitches. I do this a lot when I make postage stamp quilts because the squares are very small and I can stitch diagonally in both directions to make a diamond pattern that emphasizes the grid-like nature of the postage stamp quilt. I've also done it with quilts that had a lot of different pieces of varying sizes and I did straight line quilting where every row of stitches was parallel. By spacing them really close together, you get a very modern, almost corduroy effect with the quilting stitches that can be really pleasing to the eye because rather than emphasizing the design of the patchwork, it works in counterpoint to it. So the two of them play off one another to create really interesting visual effects. I'm going to demonstrate a sample quilt, a little tiny sample quilt for you by making diamonds using a 60 degree line on my clear acrylic ruler exactly the same way that I have a dozen other quilts in our home because it makes such a pleasant effect that looks really complicated but actually utilizes the structure of my walking foot in order to make some great quilting lines. Straight line quilting gets done with a walking foot, which I discussed in the tools and supplies episode of the How to Quilt series. This is the walking foot that came with my quilting sewing machine. Um, the actual walking foot itself is here. It has a bar that goes up and down on the machine as the needle goes up and down, and a second set of feed dogs here that are activated by that bar so that the fabric as it goes through isn't just being pulled by the feed dogs from beneath, it's being pulled by a second set of feed dogs from above. What that does is the backing fabric on the feed dogs below and a standard presser foot might cause your quilt sandwich to shift, but with the walking foot, both of those layers get moved through at the same time, so you don't get any shifting or bunching. It also has a bar on it, which is fully adjustable. This bar can measure the distance from a previous line of quilting to make sure that if I'm doing multiple straight lines of quilting, they're all spaced equidistant apart. What that means for me is that on this quilt or any other, I can put in rows of stitching, but I only have to mark it one time, for example. On this particular whole cloth quilt that I recently finished for my husband and me, I have a layer of denim on front. I have a beautiful floral fabric on the back. All of these lines are 60 degree angles to the edge of the quilt and they make these diamonds. I drew exactly two lines. You can actually see one of them very faintly here. The other one is going in the other direction. And as I worked with my presser foot 
the placement of this bar meant that I could sew a line here and then move over and sew keeping this bar on my previous line of stitching. We're going to do the same thing on our itty bitty scale model here, starting with putting in the lines using my clear acrylic ruler, your best friend and mine. Here is my 60 degree angle line. And I like 60 degrees because it makes these sort of lozenge shape diamonds, but you could use the 45 or you could use the 30, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. I'm gonna line my 60 degree line on my ruler up with the side of my patchwork. And this works at scale. So your giant quilt, it's exactly the same ruler, done exactly the same way as with this itty bitty one here. And I'm gonna shoot for sort of the middle-ish of my quilt top, and I'm gonna draw my line. This will be the line for my very first row of quilting stitches. I'm gonna do a second line going the other direction. Despite the fact that these pins are here, I'm just gonna sort of roll over the pins. And you can see, ah, that one's a little tricky. But for the most part, I can just go over the pins and get that line all the way from one side to another. Now I go to the machine and I attach my walking foot, thread it up, and do the actual quilting. As I take this to my sewing machine to put in the quilting stitches, um, you'll notice it's a fairly small piece and I have an extension table on my machine to support that weight. When you're working with a larger quilt, that can be a different consideration because we're talking about a lot of bulk, maybe not weight, but certainly a lot of volume involved in the fabric as we send it through the machine. If you upgrade to the How to Quilt Premium Edition, we have a whole separate video talking about how I manage my quilt when I'm working at the sewing table and different ideas for you to make the quilting more pleasurable. I come in, the hooks go on the screw, and then there's a cutout that allows me to attach it. Yours may go on differently, but those two elements have to be there. It has to be attached in the shank here where all your presser feet attach, but it also has to have this gadget on the screw because that's what runs the second set of feed dogs right here. Place my fabric underneath the presser foot and I start sewing off the quilt top. I'm not going to begin in my patchwork. I'm going to begin in my backing and batting to make sure that every stitch is outside the edge of my patchwork because I'll trim that off later. Can you see, are you watching these guys as they go? That's preventing any shifting or bunching. So between the basting pins and the walking foot, it's just a nice smooth ride. If your machine didn't come with a walking foot, there are generic versions available online for any machine that you might possess. Best practices are to then do the other line. And this is for a couple of reasons. One, because as you quilt in one direction, you could inadvertently wipe that line away and then you wouldn't be able to see it anymore. The other is because this really anchors the body of the quilt and prevents it from shifting or skewing as you go along. It stabilizes it because we're quilting in two directions. This is also where I'm going to begin taking out these quilting pins because I don't want to sew over those. I'm hearing a little bit of a popping sound in my machine as I go, which makes me think it's time to change my needle. And that's a good moment for you to consider, like do I have a nice new needle in for my quilting? A new needle will make the most beautiful stitches. Even if you think it won't make a difference, it really can. Each time I get close to a pin, I stop and take it out. And then here where those two lines of quilting intersect, we really can get a nice anchoring and um, prevent any additional shifting of our quilt. 
flip around and we're going to sew in the opposite direction. We don't want to sew everything in the same direction. We want to go up, down, up, down, up, down across the body of our quilt. And I'm going to use my guide bar and then lower my presser foot so that the needle is in the backing and the batting. And I'm watching my guide bar as I quilt to keep my stitches straight. our finished piece of quilting. You'll notice how fluffy and very traditional sort of like quilted jacket that looks. That's really the batting. There are lots of different lofts available for batting. Loft is the phrase for how much squashiness and air it creates and how much volume it will make between your rows of quilting stitches. So you can try out some different lofts of batting until you find the one you like the best. With your large scale quilt on the ground because realistically you don't have a table this big where you can lay it out you are going to want to square it up and you can use your clear acrylic ruler to do that and make sure that all of your edges are square in relation to your patchwork and then we trim the entire thing through all the layers nice and square for a smaller piece like this i could definitely use my rotary cutter to do this trimming, but I, I don't see a practical way that you can use your rotary cutter on a full size quilt. So I'm gonna demonstrate this using my shears. It doesn't have to be flawless, but we do want to cut to the scale of the patchwork and remove any excess batting and backing so that we're ready to bind our finished quilt. But let's say you have ambitious ideas for how to quilt your quilt which is to say you have designs in mind for the quilting stitches in your How to Quilt sampler. Maybe straight lines are not your jam and you want more interesting shapes, curly cues, circles, or even random swirls going across the body of your quilt. In that case, you're interested in free motion quilting. And that's coming up in the next episode of How to Quilt.